Hey everybody, doing a video today on the Hollywood Orchestra Opus Edition. This is something that was released last week. Kind of a bumpy start, but it seems like things are settling in a little bit. So I finally got it installed and I wanted to make a quick video just showcasing how this works on my Silicon Mac Mini. This is a, a company, East West Quantum Leap, that I've been using for a long time. I've used the Hollywood Orchestra before the Opus Edition, uh, the Diamond version, and now I'm a subscriber to the Composer Cloud, uh, which the EDU version, since I'm a professor. And so it's a little different than the Diamond version, but this new product is available with that. I pay like a, a once a year fee and get all of their instruments as a part of that bundle. I use them all the time. I love them. I've talked about them before in other, other videos on this channel. And I was really excited for this Opus Edition thing um, because it has a few features which I really like, but I was also kind of nervous about it. Partially because in the system requirements, it says the minimum system is a quad core, four cores running at 2.7, which I meet that with the, the M1. But then it says the RAM 16 gigabytes is the minimum and they prefer 32 which I don't have either one of those because I got the 8 gig uh, Mac Mini. Now I have a Windows computer which has the 32 gigabytes and a very fast processor and all that. So this is a product which I could be using on that computer instead of in Logic if I need to. Uh, but I thought, you know what, I'll just install it and see. Now I am using the, the lesser version of Opus. Because of the Composer Cloud version that I subscribe to, it comes with the Hollywood Gold Orchestra, which has two different mic positions, uh, not as many individual patches, but still quite a few. I believe the overall thing, let me pull this up real quick here, just so I can see it. The Opus here, it's, um, it's gonna take a second to, to count up all of the files, but I'll let that run in the background. It's over 600 gigabytes uh, for this instrument. Um, it's pretty massive, and so I have a, a drive just for it. A fast drive that um, has really fast read and write speeds and uh, is hooked in uh, over USB 3, all of that. So that's that I'm not worried about too much because I, I definitely prepared for that just a little bit for any of my instruments, but that specifically I knew that this was coming and wanted to be able to run it pretty smoothly. Okay, so how does it run? First of all, it took me a little time to get this installed even after some of the bumps last week with everybody else, uh, partially because there are the seven individual libraries that need to be installed, the Hollywood brass, the harp, the percussion, the woodwinds, the solo cello, solo violin, and then the strings. I don't think I missed anything. All of those have to be in, and I have to have the gold versions, and I had the diamond versions of like four of those. Um, and so those were already in place, but I can't use them for this version. Anyway, long story short, some of them were in the wrong place. It wasn't reading them, and it took me a little time and some help from, uh, from East West to do that. Their Facebook response through Facebook Messenger is amazing. It's one of the best services that I've ever seen from any company like this. Um, I had an issue uh, as a part of the installation. They wrote back within like 20 minutes. Um, and then I wrote them another message late at night. And they got back to me before I even went to bed. And um, this morning I implemented what they said. Had to still figure it out, but it was really handy. So what we have with this is this new Opus interface for all of our instruments, but that's not really what I wanted to talk about because that I can run with less RAM, no problem. I just have to freeze tracks in some cases if necessary. But the orchestrator is what I want to look at today because that's what I was nervous about not necessarily running very well. So the orchestrator allows us to run different um, configurations of an orchestra. Uh, each of the different four sections, woodwinds, brass, percussion, strings, each of those have individual things with flutes, for instance, um, oboe, and these are each of these have their own configuration. So I can come through, for instance, with a preset with like brass, 
big legato wide, double click on it, and it's going to load up that preset. Now this is a small thing. I mean, this is not a large part of the orchestra. There's just four instruments. And so I thought, you know, that'll probably work okay with my computer configuration, uh, which is the, again, the eight gig M1 Mac mini. And it puts together these four using smart voicing, which is really nice. And uh, you can actually add in things like uh, MIDI patterns and things. It's really awesome. Um, all of these seem to work pretty well. Um, even the full ensembles. Let's load up this preset. The only time I hear any kind of clicks and pops uh, or when I first load something up and it's still kind of putting in, I put play a note too soon. This is the other thing that's interesting. Even though I have everything downloaded, every once in a while some of these patches say they need some more. So it's really easy. Once you do this once, you don't have to do it again. Um, but they're going to just really quickly in the background here download the rest of the files I need. Okay, so still coming, um, fast internet, but it still takes a minute, even though, because there's just a massive amount of files, even though they're all pretty small, this will come down pretty fast. Okay, so that's one example. These things here, the ensembles, they're just playable presets of all these different things, and they uh, break your MIDI apart into different voicings. Uh, you can actually come through if you want, and, and do things so I can, well, once this is done, I'll show you. Come on, Penderecki samples. And it's not actually downloading right this second. It may have had a little bit of a glitch. Um, okay, so here, like for instance, with this one, I can say top plus another octave, uh, whatever we can assign voicings to the part. So I can play a tight chord and it will spread them all out. Super cool. Asinatos, giving rhythm to the things. This is handy and uh, we can pull something up with a preset here. There's the little click and pop at the beginning the first time as it's still loading things. So we have that rhythmic thing, which is really cool, and um, we can move around tempo and things like that. A bunch of options there. And then the scores. This is one of the ones I was most interested in uh, because this loads up a full orchestra with a lot of the MIDI functionality uh, in play. So for instance, let's close this down. You'll see these little notes here. This is what each of those parts are going to do Woodwinds have a little bit, the brass has held out notes, the percussion has some moving things, and then the strings have the most. And I was thinking, there's no way with an eight gig Mac mini M1, even though it's fast architecture, all that stuff, there's no way that this is just gonna play smoothly. And there it is. I mean, there's no glitching on the notes or anything. I mean, this is like smooth. Now, we are using the not the quite as high of a bit depth files for this. Um, and so that's one part of it. And the other part is, is that, you know, it's not actually that massive for the orchestrator, even though it's doing a lot. What's happening is, is that it's loading in exactly what it needs and it's smart about it. So you're not loading in a bunch of extra fluff. And then I haven't even started using the mod wheel here for you. Wow.
flawless. Everything is flawless about this. Uh, I'm excited to see how this works with the um, the full version, the diamond version. But uh, with this version, it sounds good still. It's not the full resolution, but it still sounds good. Um, I'm working at 256. If I go below there, it definitely has some issues. You'll notice I have one processor thread spiking, and that's because this is a single instrument, which Logic has to put on one thread. And so that's a limitation. We could spread this out and do it in different ways, and it would it'd be a little bit more efficient. But, you know, we could freeze this. I mean, this is a very freezable file. And then once we freeze it, we would free up all the processor. So really powerful way to work here. On top of that, because this is all in one interface, we have a full mixer here. And this mixer has things like equalization and compression. It has um, modulation, harmonic things. We have really amazing reverbs, which sound great. We have the SSL channel strip, uh, which is a, a great emulation of that. All of this stuff means that we can mix the entire orchestra here inside this one unit. And uh, that leaves everything. I mean, we put synthesizers and other percussion and other instruments and audio recordings and all of that stuff out in Logic. And uh, this is really tightly encapsulated. It's one way of working for sure. Uh, that being said, let's... Uh, actually turn off this track for a second and let's just load up a couple other empties so we could come through if we wanted to and put them all separately so we could put this opus here uh, not necessarily even with the orchestrator at this point. Um, we could do with the orchestrator, but you know we could just come through with the individual sections of instruments if we wanted to, and um, and do that. Or we could use the orchestrator still, which is really handy. Uh, without necessarily having to do the full things, we could just say, you know what, let's do brass, long, uh, sustain, basic brass right so then we come down to the next one and we say same thing orchestrator so this separates them out from having to be in the same exact thing um, so we'll do woodwinds for this one winds long basic one so instead of having them all in one unit we could put them all in separate ones. That folder information I did earlier came back at 690 gigabytes. So decent size. Looks like we're slowing down here just a little bit. But it's coming. Ooh, I did the wrong one. Play. I don't want play. I want opus. There we go. Orchestrator. And then we'll do strings. And then on the last one, instrument, opus, orchestrator, we'll do percussion, tonal for now, sure. Okay, so now I've got all of those. You'll see I'm using more of my processing threads. And right now I have it limited to the four, but we could, if we wanted to, take this all the way up to the high perf performance setting. It'll actually have to reload everything now that I did that, but that's okay for a second. So... Still, it's actually still loading them. That's not a glitch at this point yet. Although I hear some glitch. Let's delete the top 
Oh, that one's actually turned off, so we're not even worried about it. Let's see. And then we have this one. Once we put notes in there, it wouldn't have to reload them. Okay, so for test sake, let's record just something. Really simple. We'll do the same thing here. I'm really just, uh, I'm not even playing anything that makes sense, but I want to see what happens here with all of them. Okay, just three different parts doing hardly anything. And... Okay, so they're all playing together. Once they were in there, there wasn't, wasn't too many clicks and pops. It says it's 5.5 .5 gigs of RAM, um, which isn't crippling the system because of the way the new silicon uses so much virtual RAM. But um, each of those could be frozen and, and done that way. Really cool functionality. And you can see it's all, even though I've got in each of these, for instance, I've got four big instruments there. Uh, with this one, I've got four big ones. I think they should all probably be four. Oh, five for that one. Uh, they're all playing, and it's not even crashing the system or anything. When I spread them out, it's actually putting them on different tracks. And so, you know, we have that more spread out on the threads. one still is hitting a little bit uh, I could go up to 512 but that's really pushing it in terms of responsiveness once I stop screen recording it will probably get better because now it's doing so much right this second um, that it, it is becoming an issue what happens if I just load in more and more instruments uh, eventually will run out of processing um, and the RAM will be an issue, but it will continue to create more of this pocket that it pulls off of the main hard drive, which is why I'm keeping my main hard drive relatively empty so that it has room to do all of that. Is that going to make the hard drive die early? Probably. I don't know when. I don't, I don't use this thing 16 hours a day like some people are doing. But I think at that point... You know, we can invest in more computing if we're, you know, getting paid work and uh, it's successful. If it's just for fun, then, you know, you can make it work even at that point. Anyway, just my own personal take on this. I think it's really amazing. You heard the presets for the full scores. They sound incredible. You can make your own. There's going to be an ecosystem of people creating those and selling them, I'm sure. Uh, so keep your eye out for those. But it's just a great system. And this... Uh, Mac Mini is handling this far better than I hoped it would. Okay, this is the video I want to make today. Uh, I'd love to see your comments about it, but um, let's talk soon.